Oh, you're fine. Here you go. Just talking about level. Um, she worked out really well. I just asked people on the way in, oh, what level are you? And I, I just, uh, just just made a list based on what people told me, sent them out. And surprisingly, it's actually pretty pretty solid. So it's kind of the main thing starting off. People, probably one of the biggest complaints for tennis players in general in an environment like this is, oh, the person I'm working with is too weak, or, or if you're the weakest player on the court, then it's, you know, you feel bad. It's kind of awkward because you're not giving the other person good practice. So the four of us um, are just really communicating closely about if we think anybody needs to move or be adjusted. Um, but actually, so far, it's, it's pretty solid. Feel free to jump up, go uh, yeah. talk to people like between the times like this and just say, how's it going, how'd that go? And they have really, really great insight. Oh, fantastic, great workout. More importantly, great people I'm on the court with. Just drove in this morning, hour and a half, easy drive. So I was kind of I was kind of picking up tennis again after not playing for a while after high school, and I found Ian's podcast that he published like all the time back, you know, eight years ago or so, and I just kept listening. You know, it was when they came out, and eventually he did videos, and I just enjoyed following all of his content. It's grown grown into something really good right now. It used to really freak me out. It's pretty awesome now. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially from those of you who've never really, I, I'm sure there's some of you who've really never practiced the split step before. Or maybe you did and it wasn't as cle clearly defined and not as specific. Uh, and so I'd love to hear a couple experiences. What was it like trying it out? Danielle? You know, I try to keep myself moving, but then when it's time to split, maybe my feet aren't at the right spot. I don't know. It's just, that's hard thing for me. So what Danielle's saying is, is this is a very different focus for her compared to just taking more steps or taking smaller steps or just taking steps in general. Uh, and I, I think that's something that you, many of you can relate to who maybe just tried it for the first time. It's not so much about taking more steps, it's about taking the right steps at the right time. That's why elite level players look so effortless and they look so efficient, is because they are efficient. They're taking purposeful steps at purposeful times and not just taking a whole bunch of steps. Uh, in fact, just taking a whole bunch of steps would be a great description of just lower level footwork patterns. So yeah, it's really key to, to actually get into a rhythm and a pat there's a cadence to it when you do it correctly. And when you fall into it, everything just kind of seems to flow much better. But at first it's gonna feel forced and it'll feel like a lot more work. Anybody experience that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, it's a lot more effort. I talked to a couple of you about this. At first it is, it's just like any other form of exercise. At first it's like, how in the world am I supposed to keep up with this? After a while your capacity just increases and it's just what you're it's just what you're used to doing it just becomes normal so for any of you if you felt like oh my like what how in the world am i going to do this for six hours it's a really strong strong indicator that it is not at all a habit for you right now and it's something i strongly recommend you all work on back at home we're not going to be on your back about it the rest of the day in fact we're going to totally leave it uh, for the rest of the day from this point on but when you get home i strongly encourage you to use this as a focal point in your game because you will see big dividends if you start doing it. All right, we're gonna move on. We gotta keep stuff moving. Uh, next, I'd love all of you to come in between court one and two and Kevin's gonna show you what we're doing next. So, uh, the next great start. Five foot. When, when would you generally this, in a five nutshell, is like the magic down. of rally, what I've been working rally, on for uh, 10 years. Uh, it's mostly a rally. Just uh, really, really passionately putting myself out there as a coach and then seeing what players are attracted to that and then when you get coaches and players coming together that share that level of enthusiasm it's like everybody here is like in their this is like nirvana for everybody participating the coaches the players and that kind of environment is just it's just so great to be a part of uh, and it's great to facilitate that for people before the internet is really it's really hard to, to do that it's cool to be able to be a part of it and also just one more minute one more minute sounds good okay i love it Heads up. I like it. It's a test. Let's see if you can hold the camera there. You passed. 
I'm gonna get that follow up. The follow through is all about focusing on the link and the rack of basic contacts. Now that I need to work on. Okay, so uh, you'll be hitting all four hands. Dimitri, you'll be hitting all back hands. Right down this alley. So Leslie, that last shot you just hit, yeah. was that a little bit late with your swing or a little bit early with your swing? A little late. Right, exactly. The earlier, earlier you are, the further in front you make contact, which means the ball goes more across the right. The later you start, the further back you make contact, and that makes the ball go inside out. Gotcha. To the right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right, we're going to work on some volleys now. Come on. Oh, come on down. Okay, so we're going to talk about volleys. And we're going to talk about two very important things um, that have to do with volleys, and that is relaxation and guiding the ball. Okay, uh, most of you have watched many of our tutorials and know that these two things we harp on over and over and over because they are so important in your accuracy and being able to um, really pinpoint where you want to put your volleys, which is the goal when you're at the net, correct? Okay, so. Number one, relaxation, is making sure that your hand is loose. Out of a, about a 10, scale of one to 10, you want it between like a two and three, okay? Which is gonna be a lot looser than most of you probably think it is. Hand or wrist? Your hand, okay? Your wrist is loose too, but you want your hand, your grip, okay? Because that's where that tension comes from, okay? So when we go out and we're doing this, you really want to have that relaxation, okay? So that way when you're actually making contact, you're going to be able to have that recoil that you're looking for, okay? Okay, now we're going to work on guiding. The number two is guiding the ball. So kind of the definition of this is have, making sure that after contact, your racket is continuing on that path, okay? So many times we see just the, and you hear a lot of uh, different tennis pros saying, you know, step, step with the ball. Step and punch, step and punch. Don't ever punch the ball. That's the, if you take nothing from today, don't punch your volleys, okay? You wanna make sure that you have that relaxation and that guide so that you can actually control. If you are punching, the ball is gonna land either straight down or five feet out, okay? You have no control over the ball, especially when the ball is coming back with a little force, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on those two things, okay? And that's it. Like we said, like Kirby was talking about, very singular focus. Do you want a volley? I do want Ian's, a volley. Ian likes his volleys, so we'll let him volley. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to have is <clears throat> Ian's going to be working on guiding the ball. And again, we talked about it's making sure that after contact, you're continuing on that path. You're not dropping your wrist. You're not stopping at contact. It's a soft guide through the ball. His goal is to not kill Kevin. Okay? So you really want the, the ball to land of your partner and you can see how close Kevin is aiming, okay? If you force it, get ready Kevin, if you stop at contact, you <laughs> okay? Then, I only gave you a little bit of warning there, then you're going to have a lot of trouble controlling it to bounce in front. If you have a lot of tension, can you give me about a 9 or 10 tension here? then it's going to look like that. That's where you have trouble controlling that ball. So he has, what do you think you're at right now, Ian, on tension? 1.5. Oh, I think that's where I was. <laughs> yes, 50. Right, okay. So you're going to make sure that you're at that, you know, two to three mark and that you're really soft right in front. Now, after this, um, after we do a few of these, now we're going to have Kevin go back to the service line and Ian's going to continue to guide the ball while Kevin just has continental, he's just blocking the ball back. You're not swinging, you're just facilitating the drill. And the goal is, is for Ian to have the ball bounce in the middle of the service box. Okay? Not about hitting the ball hard, not about trying to win the rally, unless you're trying to make a lot of balls, because that's the goal. If you feel, if you're trying to make contact out here, you will never be able to guide the ball because you have no extra room, okay? You wanna make sure that you're making contact to where you're gonna have enough room to guide. Yeah, can you push it, yeah. It, it little... looks awkward and yeah. You'll hear a lot of people say like, make contact in front, but it really and truly, you wanna make contact where it's comfortable and positioned to your body and where you can guide afterwards. Even when it's coming at you fast. Yes, especially he... when it's coming at you fast, definitely. Here, 
Hit it fast. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I think the, impr uh, the important in front part, Michael, is in front of your yeah. body, not necessarily in front of your stance. Is it just for this drill that our grip is supposed to be at the two level, or is it for like most all volleys? Are we like supposed to be like pretty relaxed? As the, as if Kevin were to go back, and we're not going to do this, but if Kevin were to go back and really start hitting the yeah. ball, you might be more like a five. Okay. Uh, but you really don't want to be a whole lot higher than that. You really want to keep it relaxed as much as you can because you can't really get that that recoil on the ball okay. um, if it's really stiff yep. and tight. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's go back to our courts and uh, grab a partner, and you're going to be controlling back and forth with them. Okay? So we're starting with a, with a partner really closer close than that. And tossing. Okay. Yep. Your partner is very close and tossing that back to you. Oh,